Today's episode of Morning Coffee with Cameron is brought to you in part by Free to Use Sounds. The Free to Use Sounds all in one bundle comes with over one terabyte of commercial and royalty free recordings that you can use in your sound design, post production, music, or any other project you see fit. If you want instant access to more sounds than you will ever conceivably need, you can use my promo code VenusTheory5 at checkout to save $5 and get the entire collection for only 20 bucks. Howdy doody buckaroonies and welcome back to another episode of Hey Brain, it's Wednesday and we really need a video for next week, so what you got? Sorry bro, best I can do is a bunch of anxiety and a big scoop of go f*** yourself. So I apologize in advance that this video is going to be pretty off the cuff and unscripted, but that's what it is. Anyways, in this video I want to talk about exotic scales and more specifically dive into the idea of modal mixture, because this is probably one of the most powerful concepts when it comes to cinematic music writing and just learning to spice up your chord progressions, but it's really not that hard to do. So it's another one of those kind of fun tricks that just makes you sound like a musical f genius. Of course, as usual with these types of videos, I would love for you to consider this as a homework assignment for yourself and go out and play around with it. And if you make something cool, feel free to share it with me because I love to hear what you're out there doing and what you're up to. Let's talk exotic scales. In this video, I want to break down Mixolydian flat six because it's a really interesting scale that's a lot of fun. It's very colorful. It's got a lot of cool twang and twists to it, and although by most standards this is considered a pretty exotic scale, it's one of the easier ones and one of the more common ones to grasp, and I think it's going to be a good foundation to all of this. So how do we play Mixolydian flat six? First, we need to know our Mixolydian mode. So modes are a lot like scales, they're just sort of a different way of thinking about scales, because it all interlinks, and once you understand it, it's a really easy way to sort of unlock looking at notes or the keyboard, in this case, in a bit of a different way, and it makes it easier to interpret things, sorta. To find the modes, we can work from C to B. So going on all the white keys from C to C is one mode, D to D is another mode, E to E is another mode, and so on. Our modes are Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, Aeolian, and Locrian or the one we don't talk about. This is pretty hard to remember, so the easier way to do this is I do pot, leave me alone, Locrian. So going by that, I do pot, leave me, we land on G. That gives us Mixolydian. So G to G is the Mixolydian mode. Mixolydian is a pretty bright, mode, but what makes it Mixolydian and not major is we have this flat 7, which I guess gives it sort of like a bluesier flair. Sick. To turn this into Mixolydian flat 6, we take the Mixolydian mode and flat the 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, flat, or down a half step, and we have Mixolydian flat 6, which is interesting because it starts off very bright, but then we get real twangy, but it's kind of a fun twang if you think of it. Because it's like major on the bottom, but minor on the top. And that's a really fun blend of moods. Normally when you're working in modes, you might tend to compose with diatonic chords, or chords that exist naturally based on the notes of the scale, but with Mixolydian flat 6 and other exotic scales, things get a little bit weird. So in Mixolydian flat 6's case, we have major. Then we go right into diminished, followed by, you guessed it, another diminished, followed by minor, minor, augmented, then major, major. So that's a pretty tall order if you think of it that way, but it's not that hard to use. When it comes to utilizing Mixolydian flat six, musically speaking, 
my brain, I think, tends to think of it sort of like the regular old minor scale. Just with a raised third. And that's exactly what mixolydian in flat six is. So, with all this in mind, let's talk about, I guess, some of the things that sound cool in Mixolydian and flat six and make it easier to use. One of the big ones is working from major one right up to that minor four, because that's our Mixolydian flat six flavor. This flat six gives us minor four. So this is a cool transition. This major one to minor four movement feels a lot like a chromatic median in that it comes across as very epic and superhero-y. But it's not a chromatic median. It's just a major one to minor four, but it gives you that same sort of flair. Another fun way to utilize Mixolydian flat six is to sort of hide the third and not give it away right away, but sort of sneak it in there for a bit of spicy twang at the end. So you're kind of using Mixolydian flat six to create a Picardy third, sorta. Kind of a fun way to look at it. Similar to that, another fun thing is using the major one and major seven, but working in the flat six melodically, it gives you very Trent Reznor y film score y thing. Cool. Finally, I think one of the most profound sounding ways to use this is to double up big, beefy, meaty, cheesy, hardies, double octaves underneath things using the degrees from the scale, but holding something kind of simple and stable up top, like just working on sort of a loose arpeggiated thing here. Start on one, seven, one. Minor six, four, one, yeah. Let's go to five, minor six, five, one. Not really doing much of anything. Seven, four, five, one. Very bruh. So that is kind of a quick tour of an exotic scale and a couple ways to think about it and approach it. And hopefully that's helpful. But the real meat and potatoes, I guess, of what I wanted to talk about with all this is the idea of modal mixture or playing with different modes at the same time. This is sort of what I've talked about in a previous video, but on the concept of the mode rather than the chord. The easiest way to start experimenting with modal modulation, I think, is just to work in the minor third every once in a while, which takes us from G mixolydian flat six and turns that into G minor, better known as Aeolian. So we can start working that in melodically to open up some different kind of colors and timbers, I guess, to the overall flavor of things. And by pairing diatonic chords from these two modes together, we can create more interesting progressions.
pretty neat stuff. Sticking a bit more purely to chords, we can mix these modes together to, I guess, correct some of the weirder things about Mixolydian flat six by borrowing some stuff from Aeolian. So we could start with our G major, work to B flat major, E major, or E flat major, sorry. And then maybe we could jump down to a C major. Now we're just going regular Mixolydian. Mixolydian flat six going to, I don't know, the F. G major. And ta-da, we've got a really interesting spicy twist. Doing things like this allows you to access some, I guess, pretty advanced concepts with things like chromatic mediants or secondary dominance or all sorts of other kind of spicy tricks in music without necessarily needing to deeply understand the underlying theory behind it because you're just sort of connecting the dots that you already know. Another particularly common variant of Mixolydian is Mixolydian flat two. Where Mixolydian flat six is sort of the chipper bottom end with the minory top end. Mixolydian flat two sort of exists as the opposite of that with the minory spicy bottom end, but with the majory top end. So these two flavors contrast very nicely. So with regular old Mixolydian stuff, I guess Mixo flat six, let's do that. By working in the flat two and not using the five, We get sort of a false Neapolitan second because we're building a major off of a flattened two. And if we sort of play this out of a minor scale with that on top. That's a really interesting combination. Really what we're doing there is almost turning this into G Phrygian. And I've already done a video about the Phrygian mode and why it's super, super fun. But with a true Phrygian mode here, now we really get into the sort of fun stuff if we're mixing Mixolydian flat six with Phrygian. So that's really powerful. Okay, so at this point, it's probably worth taking a step back and just answering the question of the fuck does all of this mean practically when making music? Because we've talked about a whole bunch of technical jargon and big words and stuff, and it may not make a whole lot of sense. So to boil this down to its essence, I guess, this stuff is a lot like chords. We have major chords or minor chords, or sus chords, or seven chords, or uh, augmented chords, or whatever. There are a lot of different flavors of one chord, and modes are kind of the same way. We have one sort of flavor of something, we have another flavor, and we have variations on all of those flavors and we can swap between them freely. And it's a really powerful thing to start playing with because it opens up the keyboard or notes or just music in general in such a broad and beautiful way because you can freely swap between any of this at any point to sort of unstick yourself or explore into another direction. But I don't know, even more simply, I guess, it's like if you needed to paint your bathroom and let's say you wanted to paint your bathroom blue you don't just go to the paint store and buy blue you look through like a trillion different swatches of all the different shades and hues of blue and modes are a lot like that we're painting time with different shades and hues and that's pretty cool all of this leads really well i think into using modal modulation to also change keys because something like 
G Phrygian, for example, is also C Aeolian. But that's maybe a concept we can save for a future video because I think we've had enough technical mumba humba for one sitting, and hopefully at this point you're excited enough to go out and try what we've explored thus far for yourself. So, hey, thanks for tuning into this week's TED Talk slash mild mental breakdown. I apologize if this video was sort of random and all over the place, but I don't know. I'm just not really in the right headspace right now to tackle a more traditional video for the channel. I've been really busy and my mind is sort of elsewhere lately, but that's neither here nor there, and I hope you enjoyed it regardless. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And as always, I hope this inspires you to get out there and make something awesome.